Hi and welcome to this new video. Today I just want to make a, I don't know, a clear up video about the FIFA Reykjavik. As many have uh, already seen my unboxing, I wasn't quite impressed with it. And this is also where I'm going to start. So maybe you remember the IFA where the FIFA Reykjavik got presented. Uh, I was there, I checked it out and I couldn't quite get a sound example. Uh, just listen to it quickly, but I couldn't really hear the full sound and I actually thought yeah, it sounds quite nice And I expected it to be a real speaker out of the FIFA Nordic series with the typical sound aspects like a nice deep bass uh, Really hi-fi sound flat sound signature and of course also a nice feel in the hand When I got my speaker some months later because the release was delayed I wasn't quite impressed with it. One day before another YouTuber got it and he already told me, yeah, it's not really amazing. He also did a sound check. he has a YouTube channel. I heard it and I also was impressed. Many people in the comments uh, said, yeah, my one sounds so thin. And one day later I also got my unit, which is the white one right here. And it really didn't sound very impressive. Although some days later I noticed some good things about it. For example, uh, the unheard travel and mid-range performance in this class. It's by far the best speaker when it comes to mid-range and travel performance in this class. It's incredibly clear sounding with a lot of resolution, but there was one really, really big issue, which really, uh, in my opinion and in many other people's opinion, messed up the entire package of the speaker, which was the bass. So it rolled off after about 200 hertz or a bit later, um, and it really had potential. I mean, it reached down to about 50 hertz, which is incredibly deep for such a small speaker, but the bass wasn't pushed. Uh, most nuances just got lost because uh, the bass rolled off so quickly and everyone was complaining, everyone wanted a software update or something. Then FIFA uh, published that the speaker is not updatable via the app like they claimed with the other speakers, which was another letdown. Um, also uh, some other people already sent back their speakers. I've gotten tons of comments saying I'm frustrated, I'm sending the speaker back. But for me, uh, the speaker actually had potential. I thought it was some kind of niche product. For acoustic music, I could already recommend it. So the FIFA Reykjavik was the best speaker for acoustic music. Um, but for any other kind of music where bass is involved, uh, you can pretty much forget it as the bass rolled off after about 200 hertz and any other speaker would sound better and the nice treble and mids just uh, couldn't equal that out. It was just a niche product, nice for uh, acoustic music, but for anything which involves bass, you could just forget it as uh, it was uh, massively missing. Then suddenly uh, there were some news from FIFA. Uh, Klavinet Junkie published a video where he told us that FIFA is going to come up with a new version. He already got one from them and it's going to be released in February and it's going to have better bass performance and just a nicer sound overall. And everyone was happy about it, uh, although they totally killed the hype with the first letdown. Uh, with a unit which had uh, too little bass, um, at least there was some hope for the speaker. And I was also happy, I planned on selling my units and then getting the final one, the finished one, um, about I think five months after the IFA, where it was presented, which is a ton of time. Uh, I don't quite get uh, how they cannot finish the speaker in this kind of time, I mean five months. This is uh, how much uh, we took for our DIY project uh, and we are three people and they are an entire company. I don't know why they couldn't manage it. Anyways, there was hope for the speaker and they uh, finally managed to get a final version, final firmware and the units should ship in February, which again, it was confusing. Like FIFA released a, a product which was unfinished with a lot of, uh, or with one big issue. Um, also good things, but just one major issue which just killed the product and then suddenly they don't talk about it and then they tell us that it's not updatable and then they come up with a second version. Uh, well, I didn't care because I didn't do the videos yet, I didn't do a final review, so I thought, okay, I will get the speaker and I will review it and it's finally going to be awesome. Uh, and then uh, suddenly I got an email from someone, uh, he told me, yes, uh, I have contacted the customer support from FIFA um, and they have sent me this link uh, where I can download the new firmware from the speaker. Uh, which is the February version, so the new version with more bass. And I was totally excited about it. Uh, I got the link, I downloaded the file, and then there was a tutorial and a new firmware. And you just had to plug in the speaker to your PC, um, a Windows PC, by the way. I first tried it with Mac and it didn't work. Uh, then I had to try a Windows PC, which was a nightmare because I'm not used to this. I have no clue about them. Um, but for most people who are using Windows PCs and who know a little bit about the software, 
it should be no problem for you and then suddenly you could update the speaker. I put on the new firmware with another Bluetooth tool I think. Um, then I held the buttons uh, in order to let the speaker tell me the firmware and now it's finally on the new firmware. So on the right we have the speaker with new firmware, the white one which is improved, which basically is the one from February 2018. And the left one, the black one right here, is still the older one or the one with the old software which hasn't been updated yet. Um, which has lacking base. Uh, so uh, today I just want to make a short comparison between those. I know I've talked for a lot now, but I definitely had to explain this topic and I just felt the need to really clear up the situation because I think I think it's just not okay from FIFA. They released the product, it wasn't ready, it had an issue, then they lied to us, told us, no, it's not updatable, you have to buy the new version if you want more base. Then the new one would, then the new version would come out. Um, and uh, suddenly there is an update for it and you can update it. So it's really confusing um, and they I think also lost many customers because some people bought it uh, full of excitement for it, they got let down and now they probably don't even care about it anymore. And that's why I did this video uh, in order to clear it up as I still think uh, despite FIFA failing at the, I don't know, publishing uh, of the speaker or of the, I don't know, speaker of the entire speaker, the release of the speaker just failed because it wasn't ready yet. Um, but now I think that I still want to give them another chance and do this video here um, just to clear up the situation so that you know that there is a new firmware now which fixed quite some stuff. So again on the left there is the old firmware, on the right we have the one with the new firmware. Um, and again, you could not update it via the app, but via the PC and a USB Type-C cable. Um, and yeah, it's uh, a pretty complicated setup for me, but again, for some people who know a bit about uh, Windows and everything, they can probably do it uh, with ease. So yeah, there were some updates done. So for example, first let's just start. Uh, the entire uh, issue was fixed, so there finally is enough base. They brought the base to one level with a Den and Vaya now. Uh, sometimes it even sounds better, it sounds realer, as it doesn't have this max space processing, which like, you know, it's some psychoacoustic trick, which makes you think that the speaker is bigger, but it's actually not. Uh, and the FIFA has some really nice bass. Again, in the middle, it has a, a mid-range bass driver, I think made by FIFA, which is quite high quality. Um, and uh, it can produce some really nice deep bass kick, sometimes even better sounding than the Denon. So they first of all fixed the big issue. Uh, so I'm really glad about this. Uh, they managed to just eliminate this and it finally has the bass we wanted. It's a nice hi-fi bass, it's deep, it's powerful and everything uh, you could ask for in this speaker. Um, but they sadly also did other improvements to the sound, which would be the mid-range and treble. So first, with the first version, I really uh, highly praised the mid-range and treble performance of the FIFA Reykjavik. Um, and with the new version, they slightly took away the treble and uh, mids and they brought it on one level with the Denon, for example. So they pretty much fixed the biggest issue, but also uh, eliminated uh, the best part about the old software. Um, I'm not saying that it's bad. The mid-range and treble performance still is above average, about on one level with the Denon and Vaya, the Dostel SD806, or I don't know, a mini rig uh, or something. So it's definitely still a nice mid-range and treble performance but it's not as magical as it was before, which is a bit sad, but I think I can totally live with it as the, um, uh, as the base fix or something definitely uh, can uh, I don't know, overcome this. So the fixing which they did is uh, way bigger, the amount of fixing which they did is way bigger than the slight uh, decrease in travel and mid-range, which they have also done with a new software update. So now it definitely sounds like a way better package, it performs much better than the old one, except of course for acoustic music. With acoustic music, the FIFA Reykjavik with the old software, or let's just call it 1.0, uh, still sounds a bit more sparkling, a bit more magical. Um, and the new version uh, has a little bit less treble. I also did some measurements. So now you can see the measurements from the old one. And now the new one, you can see they're massively improved on the base. They fixed everything there. But you can also see that they slightly took away the treble uh, and also the mids, which in my opinion is a bit sad because the nice base and the nice mids and treble would probably make it the best speaker in its class. And now like this, it's just one of the best ones. So it's definitely up there with the Denon. And I will do many future comparisons as now the speaker finally is what it should have been from the beginning. It's nice, it's refined, and it's one package which sounds good for almost any music. It's just lacking some small things, uh, for example, a boost for lower volumes, which the Denon has, 
and also in higher volumes the older one in my opinion sounds better the older one has a bit more distortion but the new one heavily compresses which is untypical for fifa as they usually keep all of the dynamic range on max volume maybe with a slight bit of distortion but with the fifa 2.0 Uh, it has changed and it uh, does some volume dropping and compressing on max volume now, which I will also show to you in some other videos. So again, the FIFA now finally got fixed. Uh, there were many, many improvements and also sadly some slight, uh, how do you say this, decreases um, in nice things. So for example, the mid-range and treble again got a little bit worse, um, but it's really not that much and uh, I'm just glad about the base, which is finally fixed. So now I will continue all of my testing with a new version, uh, of course, instead of the old version, because the old version just is unusable for anything that involves space. When you listen to acoustic music, I still think that it uh, beats the newer version uh, due to nicer and more brilliant treble and mid-range. But again, anything that involves space or uh, normal listening with uh, many music kinds, um, you can just forget the old version because the bass rolls off after about 200 hertz. So now, please wipe your headphones because I want to compare those two speakers a little bit. I also selected some tracks already and enjoy the video. So as you can see, I placed them like this. So we are somehow listening to them on axis. Yeah, of course, it's a 360 degree speaker, which is meant to be placed on its back. But in my opinion, you can analyze the sound the best if it's placed like this. So let's just start with the first track here and with the old one, the FIFA Reykjavik 1.0 or just the black one. can hear quite a bit more bass kick. Sounds quite a bit more relaxed and just fuller, just way more mature and now finally on the level of the other speakers. Let's try another track. Yeah, you can again hear that the new one does quite a bit better with this track, especially again with modern music. You really, really notice this improved bass now. Although I would also say that the old one again had a bit more clarity, but this definitely cannot equal out the huge lack of bass. Now let's try out another track by Van Morrison, maybe uh, some jazz music, so you can maybe like distinguish the differences a bit better. So again, this is the old one. Take you down to the burning ground. Heal me up. Yeah, you turn it around. You're the one that raised. I'm 
And again, you could hear, yeah, the same sound signature from both, or not the same one, but the same one I told you before. So the old one uh, had a bit more sparkling treble and a bit uh, clearer, more detailed mids, while the old one just delivered a much better package thanks to the uh, way better bass performance now. And again, I don't think that the advantages of the old one when it comes to treble and mids uh, can uh, compete against a huge disadvantage. Uh, which got fixed with a new one. So it's uh, for me way more important to have this amount of bass instead of a little bit better treble like you get with the older version. Um, yeah, you could again hear uh, that the mids yeah, sounded clearer with the older one, but I think that the new one maybe sounds a bit more natural just because especially when a man's singing, uh, he of course also has deep notes in his voice and yeah, sometimes they can like go down to under 100 hertz and as the um, FIFA Ray Havoc already rolls off after 200 hertz, the uh, man's voice will of course not sound as real. Um, as with the new one, uh, but of course it was a little bit more detailed. So now I selected another track where I really want to show you what they did with the new update, also compared to the Den for example. So therefore I will move a little bit closer because it's a really soft recording, sorry for this uh, sound here. This always happens when I hold my phone close to the microphone. Um, so yeah, first let's try out those two here. And I will start with this track called Spanish Harlem. You usually use it on big high-end systems in order to test the mid-range performance and the vocal performance. So let's try them out here. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem. A red rose up in Spanish Harlem. So it definitely sounds clearer. She is a special one. She's never seen the sun. She only comes out when the moon is on the run and all the stars are gleaming. She's growing in the street right up through the concrete, but soft and sweet and dreamy. So this really is where you find the differences between those two. That's what I'm talking about. If you are one of those niche customers and you only want the best travel and best, best mids in this class, well, I think that the older version actually is the better one for you because uh, as you can clearly hear, it has clearer mids and better travel. Um, but again, as an entire package, the old one definitely is unusable. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone who's just looking for an all portable speaker and I wouldn't even buy it myself uh, just because I'm thinking, yeah, for acoustic music, I can also use my Hassan key um, and it's just uh, not okay that the bass rolls off after 200 hertz. That's why I will again continue my testing with the new version as it just uh, offers a way more balanced uh, sound signature. I mean, this is not okay. The bass is lacking. But again, there is a small advantage over all of the others. The old version uh, with uh, almost no bass, okay, it does have some bass, but uh, with a huge bass lag, does have nicer treble and nicer mids than most other speakers. Now, let me show you how the old one, oh yeah, how the old one used to compare against the Denon. So I will turn off the new one and turn on the Denon. And I will place it like this maybe. And then we will compare those two again, and then I will play the new one against it, and you will hear that the then maybe even sounds clearer. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem. A red rose up in Spanish Harlem. She is a special one, she's never seen the sun. She only comes out when the moon is on the run and all the stars gleaming. She's growing in the street right up through the concrete, soft and sweet and dreamy. So this somehow sounds a little bit hollow against the FIFA and the FIFA just sounds mind-blowing with this track. It's incredibly clear sounding. The mid-range almost comes close to something like the Phantom, I would even say. So yeah, of course the Phantom is a totally different speaker, but I'm just talking about the mid-range. 
uh, as it's impressively clear, maybe not as good as on the Phantom, but it is uh, way above its class. Um, but with the new version, you will now hear that this totally changed. There is a rose in Spanish Harbor A red rose up in Spanish Harbor She is a special one seen the sun She only comes out when the moon is on the So maybe slightly more detailed here but the um, difference became much smaller. She's growing in the street, right up through the concrete, but soft and sweet and dreamy. So I can definitely hear that the denim now sounds just as clear. I will put away those weights here in order to keep the FIFA upright or on axis. And I will continue the testing like this. Uh, I think I have shown you the old one enough. Uh, well, again, for anyone looking for just great mid and treble, which is the best in its class, this one is still the best one. Um, but for anyone looking for a decent package uh, for overall good sound with also some bass involved, um, yeah, the FIFA with the new update will of course be the way better choice here. So now I will just continue testing it against the Den Envaya here, which also is one of its uh, yeah best in its class and sounds really, really nice. Um, and yeah, let's just start with another track here, which I've selected, and let's check them out. Now uh, you can hear that they massively improved the sound. So before the FIFA used to have no chance against the Denon. Again, with acoustic music, it would beat the Denon. Um, but for anything else, anything really, uh, even jazz music with a little bit of uh, like, I know, some smooth bass rumble in the background, the Denon would instantly beat the old FIFA just uh, because of the bigger, more powerful sound overall. And with the new one, they really uh, match the FIFA now, uh, sorry, the Denon now. Um, you can hear the bass performance is similar, although I would still say that the Denon has a bit more drive to the sound, uh, if you can say it, the uh, it has a bit more bite, if you can say it like this, it just sounds a bit more, a bit more precise uh, than the FIFA, which is weird. For acoustic music, which we will try now, um, I think that the FIFA comes even closer to the Denon, but with modern music, uh, they did of course improve it, uh, but the Denon still is a little bit ahead, it still sounds a bit bigger, maybe thanks to the max bass and uh, max treble processing inside, but they really did an excellent job here. So now let's check out another track by Van Morrison from before, and we can somehow compare them with acoustic music as well. I'm interested uh, myself because I didn't uh, listen to them that uh, much now, so let's see. This is the FIFA now. And of course here, way more stereo. Little people on the sidewalks. Sidewalks. On and down the avenue. Avenue. And outside in cafe. Everybody said, everybody said, how the things I 
I used to do. Used to do. Young people that were friends. That were friends. I've got to make it mean something. At the end of the day. Let's maybe try another track here. Because it's really hard to decide between those two as FIFA really took it to another level now. So maybe this one. Yeah, so now the decision gets really, really hard. Uh, with modern music, I would maybe prefer the Den still, uh, but with acoustic music, I don't know which one I like more. Uh, it's really hard. I won't try any more tracks as it's quite late, uh, yeah, after 10 o'clock, so I cannot play any loud music anymore. But I think that this is also something for another video. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to show you that FIFA finally brought the FIFA Reykjavik on the level uh, from the other. So finally, it's on one level with the DOSDA SD806. Finally, it's on one level with the best out of this class. Um, and in this video, I won't do any further comparisons as this definitely is something for another video. Um, as you can hear also, I'm uh, really in between. I don't know which one I like more. The Denon really had a much nicer sound stage, but the FIFA on the other hand maybe sounded a bit realer than the Denon, uh, just maybe a bit uh, more like a pure audio speaker, while the Denon of course has some tricks. While again, when I switch to the Denon, I think, wow, this sounds more open. This sounds just more pleasing. Then I switch to the FIFA again. I think, wow, this is just more direct. So it's really hard to decide. And I think that I will of course uh, let you decide for yourself. Um, and I will of course do a separate comparison where I compare the new FIFA against the Denon uh, because now uh, we have of course uh, the main good thing, they are finally on one level. FIFA finally managed to get the FIFA Reykjavik on one level with the others and they are both finally comparable. And which one's better? I don't know, we have to focus on this on another video or in another video as we cannot solve this problem now. Maybe some of you have already made the decision. Uh, maybe there are some, I don't know, killer aspects to you like waterproofing and that's why I like the Denon more. Um, but for me it's really, really hard as they now are really on one level, um, really head to head. Sometimes the Denon sounds better, sometimes the FIFA. I think in the end it just comes down to personal preference. Um, for me it will be really hard to decide. Thankfully I have both of them here. And if you cannot decide, just wait for my separate quick comparison or sound comparison, which will again follow soon. And I will definitely uh, give you a more in detailed look into these two here. Um, as I'm really interested in which one's better. Um, and again, yeah, thank you to FIFA uh, that you actually did something against it and maybe you listened to your customers um, and saw that they weren't really satisfied. What I think that you should do next time better, just release the final product uh, without any uh, hassle like updates and then returning one, buying the new one, releasing a second version, uh, lying to the customers, telling them, no, it's not updatable then suddenly it is updatable. So that's just uh, weird. Uh, this is, you don't just do, uh, you just don't do it. Uh, you will lose customers like this. Many people sent back their Reykjavik's already um, and were frustrated. But again, uh, there's at least one good thing. The FIFA finally is on one level with the others. So I will stop talking now. Um, I hope that you could already get an idea of how the new one, uh, I hope that you could already get an idea of how the new one sounds and how much you like it. Maybe even more than the Denon. Again, they are really head to head. Um, and yeah, and, the, and yeah, until then, stay tuned for more videos. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Until then, have a great time and bye-bye.